In the previous video, we packaged our Spring Boot application into a Docker container. Now it is time for deployment so that the users around the world can access our application. How exciting! In the next few videos, we will set up a workflow to build, containerize, and finally deploy the application to Microsoft Azure. We're going to automate the effort using a popular CI CD tool called GitHub Actions. But before we dive into the details of deployment and GitHub Actions, let's talk about CI and CD, or continuous integration and continuous deployment. Recall that an important goal of this tutorial is that besides teaching the cool features of Spring Boot, I want to demonstrate some good software engineering practices so that they will help your future career. CI and CD are two software engineering practices which can greatly speed up the development process while improving code quality in a team environment. So they're pretty good. So what is CI CD and why we need it? Assume two different teams are working on two software projects. When embarking on a project, each developer takes a copy of the current code from the central code repository. From there, the two teams choose to take different development approaches. In team one, the project is decomposed into several large features. So everyone is assigned a large feature, which takes a long time to complete and test. For team two, the team carefully splits the project into many small features, each of which takes less time to complete and test. For team one, since a large feature is normally more complex, each developer works on a feature branch for a long time, say one month, without merging back to the central repository. Sounds scary, right? A consequence is that each developer's local repository gradually ceases to reflect the central repository. The longer development continues on a feature branch without merging back to the main branch, the greater the risk of multiple integration conflicts and failures when the feature branch is eventually merged back. When team one tries to integrate, they will get stuck in something called merge hell. A huge explosion. Well, of course, GitHub will not explode. This is just a metaphor. There are a lot of bugs and merge conflicts. Even worse, during integration, team one may get bug interactions, where failures appear as the result of multiple faults, making each fault harder to find. Since all of a sudden, we are trying to integrate a lot of code at the same time. The more bugs we have, the harder it is to remove each one. It is also psychological. People have less energy to find and remove bugs when there are many of them. Do you want to find five bugs in one sitting or 50 bugs? The entire team will be mentally exhausted and frustrated. For a non-trivial real-world project, if we took team one's approach, the integration process would even last for several weeks. Everyone is sad. Team two adopts a different approach. Since each developer is assigned a small feature, they work on a feature branch for a short period of time, say five hours. Any individual developer's work is only a few hours away from the main branch in the central repository and can be integrated back into that branch in minutes. Will there be integration issues like bugs and merge conflicts? Of course. But due to the small amount of code we need to integrate, any integration issue is found rapidly and can be fixed relatively easily. So they integrate again and find a small bug and we can quickly and easily fix that bug. Everything's good. And then integrate again. We find a few bugs, not a big problem. And it's easy to fix since the code amount is small and everybody is happy. Moreover, short feedback cycles can help keep people engaged and motivated. 
so everyone is happy. And there is always a stable version of the software that works properly and contains few bugs. Everyone on the team develops off that shared stable code base and never gets too far away from that base. In summary, the essence of Team 2's approach lies in the simple practice of each developer integrating regularly against a central code repository. So, during software development, we encourage integrate early and integrate often. Here is a quote from Graham, author of No Hope for Gomez, and I modified it a little. Instead of heading for a big integration breakdown, I decided to have a small breakdown every Tuesday evening. Integration should be treated as a routine, not a drama like Team 1 in the previous slide. Understanding that, let's look at CI in detail. As you saw in the example when a team of developers work together on a shared code repository, two problems often cost a considerable amount of developers' time, bugs and merge conflicts. Continuous integration doesn't get rid of bugs, but it does make them easier to spot and remove. By merging the code continuously as it is being written, you can address any errors that arise early on when things are still small and simple. Since you have only changed a small part of the system, you're not far away from a stable version, so you don't have far to look. Since that part of the system is the part you just worked with, it is still fresh in your memory. Again, making it easier to find the bug. I think this is the most important benefit of adopting CI. As far as merge conflicts, frequent small code updates make it easier to merge changes from different members of a software development team. A good rule of thumb is to have everyone commit their changes at least once a day, but it can be much more frequent. Now think about this. If this was a manual process, then the developers would not be motivated to follow this practice since it is an overhead to do this a couple of times a day. So, we must automate the CI process. The goal of CI is to streamline the workflow and shorten the feedback loop. Ultimately, adopting CI will improve the quality of the software. In the next video, I will show you how to use GitHub Actions to set up an autonomous workflow for CI. But here is the gist of the workflow. At least daily, a developer should push the code and create a pull request. Creating a new pull request would trigger the CI process, that is, build and test the project. Building and testing the code requires a server. Fortunately, GitHub offers a popular CI CD server called GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions reads the script for building and testing and runs the build and test workflow on this pull request event. If the build fails or some test cases fail, the developer will be notified immediately so she can fix the broken builds right away. Just remember, in CI, broken builds must be fixed as soon as possible. We will implement this workflow in the next video. Then what is CD? The idea is that working software should be delivered to our customers and users in frequent, iterative cycles. There's no reason to wait. A benefit of this practice is that the development team can receive early feedback from customers and users on each new feature as it is released to production. This also enables us to use techniques such as A-B testing to determine which of the two possible implementations is preferred by customers and users. Early feedback and A-B testing are both highly recommended in the Agile software development. CD can be thought of as an extension of continuous integration. If a pull request successfully passes build and test, that pull request should be merged and deployed to production automatically. There's no reason to wait. CD is a good practice. According to a recent DevOps report, High-performing teams are estimated to have way more deployments 
than low performers. In the video after next video, I will show you how to use GitHub Actions to set up a workflow for CD. But here is the gist of the workflow. When a pull request is merged into the main branch on GitHub, this triggers a building and deploying workflow. GitHub Actions reads the script for building and deploying and runs the build and deploy workflow on this merge event. Please note that there is no testing phase since this pull request should have already passed all the tests during the CI workflow. So as you can see, CI and CD really go hand in hand. In the end, I want to mention that while these tools and processes are important in implementing CI and CD, to get the best out of CI and CD, we need the developers to embrace the practice. As a development team, we need to adapt our processes to include committing to a code base regularly, writing tests for any new feature, and prioritizing fixing the build if something goes wrong. We really need to create this culture for CI and CD in our development team. Okay, hopefully you now have a good understanding of CI and CD. In the next video, let's implement the CI first. See you there.